Good evening. Welcome to Inside Asia. Today we have a very special guest. Just a few days ago, he was the Prime Minister of Thailand. Now he is the opposition leader, Apisit Vecha Chiwa. He gave me an exclusive interview as an opposition leader. Apisit Vecha Chiwa, born August 3, 1964, is a Thai politician who has been the 27th Prime Minister of Thailand since 2008. He is the leader of the Democrat Party. Born in England, Apisit attended Eton College and earned bachelor's and master's degrees from the University of Oxford. He was elected to the Parliament of Thailand at the age 27 and promoted to Democrat Party leader in 2005 after his predecessor resigned following the party's defeat in the 2005 general election. Apisit was appointed Prime Minister of Thailand on 17 December 2008 following a parliamentary vote after the Constitutional Court of Thailand removed Prime Minister Som Chai Wong Sawat from office. At the age of 44, he was the country's youngest Prime Minister in more than 60 years. Apisit became Premier at the time of global economic turmoil and rising domestic political tensions. As Prime Minister, he promoted a people's agenda, which focused primarily on policies affecting the living conditions of Thailand's rural and working-class citizens. Thank you very much, Kun Apisit, for joining our program. My question would be very simple. How does it feel to become a full citizen again? Well, I feel relieved, in a sense. Um, as you know, uh, when you are a Prime Minister, the responsibilities are always on your shoulders 24 hours a day, seven yes. days a week. But of course, you know, I'm not yet a full citizen, as it were. I'm still an MP. Yes. I've just been re-elected as party leader. And so I will assume the position of the opposition leader soon. I'm just curious, have you returned to your previous routine, things that you wanted to do that you could not do? Well, I'm not so sure what the usual routine is because I've been in politics for 20 years. Like wake up in the morning, sharing coffee with your wife, say hello, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. It's still, a, it's still a rush because, you know, my kids go to school early. I, yeah. I get up for that. Um, but... It's, more, it's a more relaxed atmosphere because I don't have such an, an intense program. In the last couple of years, people who are following me will tell you that yes. I think their health has, uh, has uh, deteriorated as well. So, have, for example, have you have time now to read books or taking up well, certain things? I do that things? anyway. I do that anyway. Um, I've always made a point of trying to find time to read things. Uh, it's always important to continue to learn because uh, I've always joked with uh, fellow politicians that you, know, you usually become more stupid when you're in government because you're always just reading um, official and government papers and when you're in the opposition you, you tend to have more time to read other stuff. So I try to make a point of uh, you know, keeping up with some of the things that, that are being written, about, are being reflected in books and and articles. Can you just tell me what sort of books you like to read? I read a lot of books, um, I guess, related to work still. Um, and, you know, in the last decade or so, um, economists begin to write more about social phenomena and uh, also sort of venturing into uh, the overlap between fields like psychology and how people think, how people decide economically and otherwise. So I read those kinds of books. You know, I've got a couple that I'm, I'm reading now. Actually, I just finished one called The Invisible Gorilla, um, about how there are failures uh, in terms of our, able to, our ability to perceive things, how we sometimes uh, just have our memory blocked out, certain events. And more uh, scary is how sometimes we construct things into our memory that aren't real. I see. That kind of thing. I see. Reading book is one thing, writing book is another. Do you have any plan? Because you have such a tremendous I've experience. I've got my, uh, my uh, official photographer who is going to bring out, a, a, I guess it's a sort of picture book, but he'll write something. Um, I think he's got a lot of photos <laughs> over the last couple of years. So he'll probably bring that out first. I've been approached to do um, a book, but uh, I haven't yet 
conceptualize about how I want to, to, uh, to write that. It would be a very unusual thing to do, don't you think? Uh, you know, I've done a few books before, but that was before... Well, there was one actually that was written about me yes. in office, but um, I think it would be good perhaps maybe to, to let a bit more time pass, to let time pass a bit more, and then maybe I can put things in perspective about my time in office. During your office, uh, you can certainly say something, certain things you could not say. Now, as uh, not really as a you know as an MP, what do you like to say the most now? Well, I guess I can be less cautious about things. Depends what you ask. <laughs> I see. For example, uh, look at the, the attitude of the Thai toward politician, for instance. I feel there's a there's a bit of injustice here. Um, I still see and read and hear comments that you know if you're a politician, um, you're 100% bad. That all of us are the same corrupt, um, self-interest, and so on. It's simply not true. Um, uh, that's not to say a lot of politicians aren't like that. But as soon as, as the, the word politician comes up, suspicion and so on, just think when we have elections, the prime minister about to appoint a cabinet, people always have this assumption that outsiders are better people than, than, than politicians. It's a sad reflection. I think a lot of it has been brought about by politicians themselves, but it's become a gross um, generalization that, that doesn't do justice. Do you think that Thai politicians, given all this long experience of democratization, need to improve their profession? There's no particular group of people that can uh, you know, uh, declare themselves as politicians. Politicians are elected by the people. So if you want better politicians, you have to elect better people. That's a start. Mm. And uh, in terms of self-development and trying to improve your skills, ability, knowledge, I think more and more, you know, politicians who don't do that will find that they are marginalized. I guess it's the same with other professions, but I just notice, for instance, that for instance, there are still some politicians who don't use the internet. Also in the Democrat Party. I think so. I think there will oh, be that's some. Amazing. Uh, it is amazing. And, and I think they will find themselves falling further behind. One thing that puzzled me, the Thai media was so hostile to you. Particularly during election time, um, I think there was uh, a, lot of, a lot of things going on. You read about the uh, controversial email about yeah. uh, the possible bribery, if you could call it that, by a political party. That might contribute to it. And I guess it's always been a sort of tradition, isn't it, for Thai media to go after people in power. But I was a bit, I was a bit surprised that it was uh, a lot stronger during the, the campaign. I would have thought that they should have given me a hard time when I was fully in office. You actually were the few Thai leaders that focus a lot on media professionalism. Why? It's like your obsession, you know, you'd always talk about that Thai media has to improve, well, frankly, have to be professional. Well, frankly speaking, the quality of our politics depends a lot on the quality of the media. I mean, after all, where else do people get information from? Correct. Uh, they may have direct contacts with their, their local MP or local politician at best, but what they know about me, what they know about uh, all the other politicians, they get it through the media. So unless we have uh, a media that can truly reflect the reality and, and gives people a good perspective, all-around perspective on things, you can't expect much, you know, people will, 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 get the, will be as good as the information they get. So in looking back, in retrospect, do you think the Thai media articulate well, correctly, was, you know, developing uh, what uh, happening in the past two and a half years? You know, if I were to make my own judgment, I, yes. would, I would be seen as biased. Yes. But I certainly felt that people, uh, uh, perhaps because of the media, overlooked the, the, the wider picture. Just give you an example that the discussions about economic management That's right. um, narrowly focus on the fact that uh, people are suffering from high prices now. And hardly any mention of the, the wider picture that you know, we've been able to steer the Thai economy through uh, one of the you know, one of the severest crises, one that still is going on in in, in in a lot of corners of the world. I mean, that's an example. 
I felt that perhaps they weren't focusing on that, or even uh, the political conflicts, propaganda and the, uh, the focus on the losses, regrettable as they were during the April and May events. Again, trying to sort of overlook the wider picture of how uh, the conflict started and, and what kind of decisions we had to take then, um, at that moment, uh, and not uh, with the benefit of hindsight. Indeed, you have left the country in very good hands. You have uh, I hope so. 13th uh, largest uh, yes, foreign reserves. Foreign reserves, uh, very strong fiscal monetary positions to deal with um, uncertainties. I think I've, I, you know, I've done all I can to make sure that uh, the new government can have a good, a good hand in terms of dealing with. Uh, Did you think the, the media uh, well, reflects this uh, correctly, or you know, widespread? Uh, this in the paper. Well, I wish they would do more, but you know, it's up to them. Were you still confident with the plans that you want to do? So, you know, all the policy has been going on before the election. You were confident that you you would win this election. No, I, I I knew that we had trouble with uh, with inflation and high prices mm. because that's the kind of problem that um, people get hurt. Um, and feel firsthand. It's affect them. And directly. they, uh, of course, look to the government for to take responsibility. And it's one problem that I don't think anybody, any government, can find uh, solutions to, particularly if prices just reflect the rising costs that often come from other places as well, not within the country. So we knew that that was going to be a factor. I guess we might have underestimated the strength of the uh, Red Shirt organization. And, uh, of course, you mentioned already that uh, during the campaign, our rivals appear to be able to manipulate the news and, and put, on, put, put things on a spin much better than we did. Looking back, would you do things differently if there is anything at all? I must say there are two things that um, I've already actually said elsewhere where I might have considered. But on balance, I'm still not sure that I would have decided differently. First is, of course, that uh, if we had called elections earlier, we would have had better chances, you know, maybe a few months earlier than that, which is actually uh, something that people rarely mention. People, not, people often blame me for holding early elections, and on that I don't agree with them. But whether you are satisfied with the results or not, at the very least I think I have um, made sure that Thai politics has got back on track to, through elections and parliamentary process, a process that, you know, a few months ago all sorts of rumors and speculation Correct, yes. about, oh, this cannot happen, it's going to deteriorate into violence, coup d'etat, whatever. Or to doomsday scenarios. That's right, that's right. And I, and I, so, so there's no question about uh, wanting to drag things on. And I think if I had decided differently, maybe would it, we, we might have seen a repeat of uh, the April and May events of the last couple of years. But why I said I, was, I would still be reluctant to... Um, perhaps decide differently on early elections, was that I think it would still seem odd to me that after we went through April and May, that we didn't allow a bit of time for things to settle. It would have been certainly better in terms of uh, electoral prospects, but I'm not sure it would have been better for the country. There could be uh, a number of doubts and, and uh, lingering conflicts uh, within society. The second thing, I guess, um, is strategically, uh, perhaps we should have been more aggressive, but perhaps it's not in my nature. <laughs> I see. This is a very interesting point, talking uh, about aggressiveness. What I was trying to do, especially after the, the events of last year, was that I felt that as a leader, I had to calm things down. Unfortunately, by trying to be reconciliatory, if you like, while the other side is still very aggressive in their attacks, they have had more influence on people's thinking than we have. Uh, and that's unfortunate because, you know, I could have played the same game but I think the country would have suffered for it.
you paid a very high price. Well, it's a price for me for the for the party, um, and the country might suffer if this government mismanages. But you know, I'm not just in in this game just to win elections. Um, I've always said I'm I'm here also to try to to set some standards. Yeah, maybe it's not being appreciated now, but I hope that. As time passes, maybe people will come to appreciate more about the things that I've done for the sake of um, setting standards. Within the Thai context, it will take several decades well, to even really it, appreciate things that you have done. Well, no? it's better than it's not appreciated at all. At least I think it's putting some pressure on it. Successors it will be a test in the coming months to see. Will the Prime Minister now go to answer questions in the House the way I did? Will the Prime Minister allow the press to be... Uh, yes free in, in their work of monitoring and criticism. Will the, the Prime Minister allow opposition groups, people who think differently, the space and, uh, you know, fora to, to express themselves? So you are saying that it was your conscientious decision, number one, not to be aggressive, yes. number two, pay by the rule, yes. number three, observe the so-called governance to make sure that everybody follow parliamentarian rules yes. and yes it was frameworks. it was definitely a, 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 a decision that I take chair by the parties of course to the extent that the you know they, they fully support the ideas but when they suffer with the <laughs> perhaps if they suffer from the elections you know sometimes people come up to you and say oh you're too nice you're not mm, going to yes. win this way you know I have to think hard about it I don't I mean if if we were if we're not trying to set new standards I'm not so sure why we should be in this, uh, in this profession. So now as an opposition party leaders, you need to... Well, there's less pressure less when you're pressure. in the opposition. We have to be very vocal. I think, um, you know, 11 million supporters are uh, expecting you to also put up a good fight. But to do that, apart from you, you must have a good, solid party. It's, it's, are there something need to be done? We've just had an uh, um, a new election of the new executive committee and uh, being a democratic party, you know, there, there, were com there was competition and you know, people speculate about conflicts and so on. It's not all 100% smooth, but democracy never is. Yes. The party is solidly behind, behind me um, in, in, in our continued fight. Going back to the issue about, you know, if you're being nice and you, you have to uh, suffer for it, I, I hope that our country will not allow that to persist. But Thai people like Seton on Chai like leaders. And then the country has suffered for it. And uh, if now it goes beyond the usual what you call Seton on Chai to actually rewarding people who are aggressive, so, then uh, people will compete to be aggressive. And that's not going to help the country. That's correct. But it's very interesting that you, you say that because the general perception, they want the leaders that... Uh, connect that kacho with the publics, you know, say... No, it's uh, important to connect. Yeah. It's important to connect with the people. But I just wish that leaders would have the responsibilities to try to connect with the good sides of people and not bring out the worst in them. So as opposition lead leaders now, again, can you name three priorities that Democrat needs to do in order to come back, revive the party and snatch back the victory? Well, first, we have to perform our duty as the opposition um, well. That, that means taking the job seriously. People don't often take the job of opposition seriously. We want to do it in a, in a way that uh, allows people to see the value of the opposition. Um, I will um, revive the uh, shadow cabinet system yes. and uh, will take the government to task if they fail to deliver on their pledges or if they adopt policies that are not in the interest of the country. A second thing we have to do is uh, we have to uh, reach out to a number of groups, uh, clearly support among poorer people um, has not been as good as we had hoped, and uh, we need to somehow find ways to connect with them more. And that's bring, this brings me to the third point, that uh, I think our inability to gain their support this time has been different from, from previous times. Uh, this time, even uh, a lot of those people say they liked what we've done in terms of policies. And uh, some of them even say that, you know, they, uh, for instance, in the a, in a, in a Northeast, where they used to be, shall we say, anti-democrat. That kind of anti-democrat feeling, except um, among the red shirt people, has not been as strong. 
and they've been more receptive to what we've done. But that it's not enough. It's not enough for them to uh, decide to actually uh, choose us. Uh, in a so you have to, to do a lot more in the north. north so, I have, so I'm saying we have to perform our duty well, we have to reach out, and we also have to consolidate on some of the gains we've already made. Um, you know, it's always easy to, to see things just in black, black and white terms. Um, when we get defeated in an election, the temptation is, oh, we've done everything wrong. Correct. Right. Or, I mean, or when we were in government, the temptation is to think, oh, we're doing everything right. Well, the truth is somewhere in between. Correct. And, and it's I'm, important. <laughs> the way we move forward, we have to be aware of what we've done right and what we've done wrong. But Democrats have owned more than five decades of history. Some said there's have a lot of baggage, you see. So that's the way things should be, in a way. Um, I think political parties should have baggages because that's the way you take them to task and, and hold, hold them responsible. If you uh, create a new party every time, then uh, there's no guarantee that there will be responsibilities because all you do is you, you go create a new one, repackage, rebrand, and somehow you know, make people forget about what you've done in the past. We have to stand ready on our record. You have said that you're going to set up a shadow cabinet. When will it come out? We'll do that after they've delivered the uh, policy statement and when I become, officially become the opposition leader. What is your you know, primary assessment of the cabinet uh, from your point of view? From my point of view, first of all, um, uh, Prime Minister Ying Lak had a, had a golden opportunity to appoint a very strong cabinet because she's had a very strong mandate from the people. She's got an absolute majority. I don't think that the lineup that we have reflects that. Um, I think people feel this is very much sort of politics as, as, as usual in the sense that it uh, doesn't reflect the, the strong mandate and therefore the power that she had. Second thing is um, uh, there are a number of ministries where there will be concerns, notably the foreign ministry. Yes. Um, and in, in as far as uh, the economy, which I guess was the number one reason that people uh, uh, decided to elect the Pua Thai Party. It has to be uh, a surprise that you know, all those people who were campaigning, the economic leaders during the, the elections, are not the ones that are going to be doing the work. And you've got outsiders who've had experience mostly in the financial world to come to uh, deliver these policies. It's would it make your job as an opposition leader uh, easier with such a cabinet? I don't think that uh, a strong or weak cabinet makes our job harder or easier. I think everything is, depends on the performance of the, of the government. And, and ideally, you want both a strong government and a strong opposition. That's democracy. That, that's how it should be. But you mentioned uh, uh, foreign ministry and uh, looking back again to... Are there some things that you're quite happy with the outcome uh, when you serve as a prime minister and there's certain things that you, th you think that you could do better? Well, certainly there were a number of um, incidents that uh, notably the, um, the ASEAN meeting that, that uh, got disrupted. That was a, very, that was a low point uh, and you know, it shouldn't have happened. Clearly the events, not just last year's but a number of years leading up to that have affected the country's reputation. But I'm satisfied that despite those events, uh, we have played a constructive role in, uh, in the various uh, fora in, in the international community. Um, within the UN, the Human Rights Commission, ASEAN, I thought that uh, our role, our constructive role has been recognized. I think also that despite what had happened, I have managed to make sure that our reputation as a, a, a resilient economy, a resilient country, and now a democracy that continues to roll forward is something that uh, I, I, should, I feel has been an achievement. Can you uh, give me a few things that you were very proud of as leader of Thailand that you were able to present to the international communities or ASEAN certain projects, certain ideas and certain views? Yeah, uh, at the global level, um, our contributions when I was chair of ASEAN and, and I participated in the G20, which also, uh, also uh, follows on from 
some of the discussions among leaders at the World Economic Forum. I think I was very proud that uh, you know, Thailand had a voice and that we made some uh, constructive uh, contributions to the, uh, to the global economic problem. Within ASEAN, of course, the connectivity agenda was something that we uh, initiated and uh, setting ASEAN on track for integration in 2015. And do you think ASEAN connectivity is will continue? I think so. I think, I think it, 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 it would make concrete the uh, concept of community. Uh, you know, if, if you just uh, change the rules and regulations uh, for people, ordinary people, they don't feel the connections as much as if you have real connectivity, physical, but also others, other forms of connectivity. As an opposition um, this time, how are you going to probe the issue related to Thai-Cambodia? I mean, over the... Cow what we'll have to watch well. for is um, clearly, clearly the Cambodian um, Prime Minister expects an easier time from the new government. And I know that uh, they might try to spin it as better relations, but the fact of the matter is we have to make sure that... Uh, the new government does make concessions on key issues like um, sovereignty and also uh, um, the country's interest um, in, in, in our resources. So do you keep up to, with your relations with other leaders at this time um, that you contact regularly? Not regularly, but I'm sure I have opportunities because uh, I usually get invited to participate in some fora and I'm sure that uh, I'll be able to meet a lot of leaders. Well, thank you very much for joining our program, Kunapisit. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have. I hope you enjoyed the program. Apisit has spoke up his mind and he has been very frank. Good night. Swadikram.